and the World Bank. The IMEC MOU signed today will accelerate investments to scale high quality infrastructure projects and the development of economic corridors through the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment. Excellencies, I would now invite the leaders to make their remarks. First, we will have the Honorable Prime Minister of India with his remarks. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, I welcome you all to this special event. It gives me immense pleasure to co-chair this event with my friend, President Biden. Today, we have all seen an important and historic agreement being concluded. In times to come, this will be an effective means of economic integration between India, West Asia, and Europe. This will give a sustainable direction to connectivity and development in the entire world. I congratulate His Excellency President Biden, His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister Mohammed bin Salman, His Royal Highness President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, his Excellency, President Macron, His Excellency, Chancellor Schultz, Her Excellency, Prime Minister Maloney, and Her Excellency, the President von der Leyen, on this initiative. I thank all of you. From the bottom of my heart, I congratulate you for this initiative. Friends, strong connectivity and infrastructure are the basis for the development of human civilization. India has accorded the highest priority to this area in its development journey. Apart from physical infrastructure, investment in social, digital, and financial infrastructure is taking place at an unprecedented scale. We are laying a strong foundation for a developed India with this. We have implemented infrastructure projects in areas such as energy, railways, water, technology parks in several countries of the Global South as their trusted partner. In these endeavors, we have laid special emphasis on a demand-driven and transparent approach. Through PGII, we can make a significant contribution to reducing the infrastructure gap in countries of the Global South. Friends, India does not measure connectivity by regional borders. Enhancing connectivity with all regions has been a key priority for India. We believe that connectivity is a means to not only increase mutual trade between different countries, but also increase mutual trust. When promoting connectivity initiatives, it is important that certain fundamental principles are ensured. For example, 
compliance with international norms, rules, and laws, respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all nations, promoting financial viability instead of increasing the debt burden, and following all environment-related standards. Today, as we embark upon such a big connectivity initiative, we are sowing the seeds for future generations to dream bigger. On this historic occasion, I congratulate all the leaders, and I extend my best wishes to them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. India and the United States of America co-chair this initiative. And now, as the co-chair, I invite the President of the United States for his remarks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, all my colleagues. This is, uh, someone once said in a similar domestic action that was positive, this is a big deal. This is a real big deal. And I want to thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. One Earth, one family, one future. That's the focus of this uh, G20 summit. And uh, in many ways, it's also the focus of this partnership that we're, gonna, that we're talking about today. Building sustainable, resilient infrastructure, making quality infrastructure investments, and uh, creating a better future. A future of a greater, that presents greater opportunity, dignity, and prosperity for everyone. Last year, we came together as one to commit to this vision. And uh, this afternoon, I want to highlight the key ways in which the United States and our partners are working to make this a reality. Economic corridors, you're going to hear that phrase more than once, I expect, over the next decade. Economic corridors. As we work to address infrastructure gaps across low- and middle-income countries, we need to maximize the impacts of our investments. That's why a few months ago I announced that the United States will work with our partners to invest in economic corridors. In practice, it means we're focusing on regional infrastructure projects that deliver results across multiple countries and in multiple sectors. And today, I'm proud to announce that we've finalized a historic agreement for a new uh, India, Middle East, Europe economic corridor. As, uh, as a key part of this corridor, we're going to invest in ships and rail that extends the India, that extends from India all the way to Europe, connected by the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Israel. Bridging ports across two continents unlocking endless opportunities, including making it far easier to trade, export clean energy, expand access to reliable, clean electricity, lay cables that will connect communities and secure a stable internet, contributing to a more stable, more prosperous, and integrated Middle East. And I want to thank the sponsors. And I particularly want to thank Prime Minister Modi and the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salam, so, excuse me, Mohammed bin Salam and the President von der Leyen and the European Commissions. And since it's, uh, he's not speaking today, uh, I wanted to, well, maybe he is speaking today. I had a note he wasn't speaking. At any rate, I'm, I'm going to stop there. In Saudi, the sub Saharan Africa, we're working in a private public partnership as well to invest in the Trans African Corridor. That includes uh, a new partner, the European Union. President von der Leyen, thank you for making this very possible. Together, as part of this corridor, we're going to invest in a new rail line that will extend from the western port in Angola to the uh, DRC, to, to Zambia, and ultimately the Indian Ocean. It's a project that's about, uh, about far from just laying tracks. It's about creating jobs increasing trade, strengthening supply chains, boosting connectivity, laying foundations that will strengthen commerce and food security for people across multiple countries. This is a game-changing regional investment, and the, both of these are huge, huge steps forward. But they're far from the only ones. We're continuing to make big investments in infrastructure around the world. 
That includes a solar energy site and insular manufacturing facility and electricity project right here in India. We're continuing to develop economic corridors across Africa, Asia, and the Americas. And together with our partners, we're working to mobilize the trillions of investment needed to close infrastructure gaps around the world, including the formation of a new investor forum that the United States will host in a couple weeks. Let me close with this. The world stands at an inflection point in history, a point where decisions we make today are going to affect the course of our future, our future, all of our futures for decades to come, a point where our investments are more critical than ever. So together, let's continue to work as one to seize this moment in history and max maximize our collective investments, to find new partners, to unlock new capital, because when we invest in low- and middle-income countries, all countries benefit. When we invest in emerging economies, all economies benefit. And when we invest in the future of people anywhere, people everywhere benefit. So I want to thank you again for being here. I look forward to working with all of you, and I'm going to turn it back to the Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. We now invite the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to his march. Excellencies, Highnesses, dis distinguished audience, peace be upon you. It is my pleasure to all, all of us that we gather today in this friendly country to sign the MOU of the project of establishing economic corridor between India, the Middle East, and Europe, culminating what we have worked on in the past few months to crystallize the fundamentals built on this in memorandum, ways that achieve the common interest of our countries through strengthening economic connectivity. This will also reflect positively on our partners in other countries and the global economy in general. This project will contribute to developing upgrading infrastructures, which will include building railways, linking ports, increasing passage of goods and services, boosting trade between all parties, constructing pipelines for exporting electricity and hydrogen. All of this will contribute to strengthening the security of energy supplies and establish data cables through a highly reliable, efficient cross-border network. This memorandum will support the efforts of developing clean energy and will contribute to generating new and quality job opportunities and long-term gains through, throughout the new corridors for all parties. Distinguished audience, achieving what we agreed upon in this memorandum requires the immediate start to develop the necessary mechanism to implement it in accordance with the agreed upon, which will be agreed upon. In conclusion, I'd like to commend the PGII launched by President Biden with the participation of Saudi Arabia in $20 billion. We look forward to the integration of the initiative and the Economic Corridor project, which is announced in this meeting. I would like to thank those who worked with us to reach this founding step to establish this important Economic Corridor. Best, my best regard to you all. Thank you, Your Highness. May I now invite the President of the European Commission for her remarks, please. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, it's been two years since we launched PGII, a joint vision by the world's leading economies to invest in the infrastructure that low- and middle-income countries need. And two years on, more large-scale projects are seeing the light, and we are presenting two of them today. First, the India-Middle East-Europe Economic Corridor. This is nothing but historic. It will be the most direct connection to date between India, the Arabian Gulf, and Europe with a rail link that will make trade between India and Europe 40% faster, with an electricity cable and a clean hydrogen pipeline to foster clean energy trade between Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, with a high-speed data cable to link some of the most innovative digital ecosystems in the world and create business opportunities all along the way. These are state-of-the-art connections for the world of tomorrow, faster, shorter, cleaner. 
This corridor is much more than just a railway or a cable. It is a green and digital bridge across continents and civilizations. And this is also the spirit of the second project we announced today, the Trans-African Corridor, which will connect the port of Lobito in Angola with the Katanga province in DRC and the Copper Belt in Zambia. Our goal is not only to connect a landlocked region to the sea, our partnership will also invest in local value chains, in clean energy, and in skills for the local workforce. This is the spirit of PGII. It is a whole new approach to large infrastructure investment. It is about shared prosperity. It is about real benefits for all partners. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. May I now invite the President of France for his remarks, please. Thank you so much. Um, everything was said, so I just want to thank uh, Prime Minister Modi for organizing this meeting and then President Biden for, for sharing this meeting with, uh, with him. Um, we, are, we are committed and we had several exchanges, exchanges um, with my, my friends. Mohammed bin Zayed, and I want to thank you, Your Highness, and um, Mohammed bin Salman, Narendra Modi, and um, on this very important project. So everything was was said. So now, uh, with uh, the European Commission here as go I mean, European governments, we we commit to invest alongside with you on this road, and um, and this is a very important project from Asia through Middle East to Europe to offer big opportunities and connect people. But our intention is as well to make it real and, uh, and to be sure that after this commitment we have concrete results and especially to have the first global green trade road, meaning having net zero transport infrastructure, so to be sure that we have the best technologies, we have hydrogen being part of this project and uh, we channel all the possible um, common developments. I think as well our intention is to have a fair process I mean, offering a lot of uh, opportunities to manufacture in the different countries and to cooperate very actively on building these roads, building the innovations going with it, and innovating together. I don't want to be longer. Thank you very much for this. Uh, this ceremony is very important. We commit together. Thank you, Excellency. May I now invite the Chancellor of Germany for his remarks, please. Thank you, and especially thank you, Narendra and Joel, for convening this uh, event here. I think it is very important to remember that we launched the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment last year. And uh, since then, PGII contributes to closing uh, the global investment gap for quality infrastructure. As Emmanuel Macron already said most about this initiative and all the activities we speak about today are already is already set, so I will not repeat it, just mentioning two questions. The first is we have to be active that these things can happen, and this is for uh, for me, that we then have to also work on the uh, infrastructure, the, the, the institutions that can work on, on financing. And uh, for this, I think it is also important uh, to, work, to make the work of, of the World Bank successful. Germany will contribute an additional 305 million euro of hybrid capital to the World Bank. And uh, this is one of the aspects which is uh, a side of the activity here. We also try to work with Africa, and the compact with Africa will convene in Berlin in November, also as a sign of creating infrastructure, developing economy, all the things we are together here. Thank you, Excellency. May I now invite the Prime Minister of Japan for his remarks, please. 
はい、えー、ありがとうございます、えー、PGII に関するサイドイベント the holding of the side event on partnership for global infrastructure and investment on the occasion of the G7 Hiroshima summit, summit in May this year as the G7 chair Japan hosted a PGII meeting inviting private businesses for the first time which was attended by leaders of G7 and partner countries Japan is delivering various transport infrastructure development projects, including the construction of Delhi Metro here in the city to support economic development of partner countries. Going forward, we want to take this effort a step further to expand the scope of cooperation to wider areas, including supply chains, to link people together by strengthening connectivity. We also intend to work on building industrial value chains in the whole of Bay of Bengal. The road network connectivity improvement plan and other northeastern regional development initiatives in India will be organically linked with the Bay of Bengal Industrial Growth Belt Initiative, or a big B, that we are working on with Bangladesh. Furthermore, the Japan ASEAN Comprehensive Connectivity Initiative that Japan announced at the ASEAN related summit meeting will strengthen connectivity in a variety of areas, including transport infrastructure, digital connectivity, maritime cooperation, supply chains, electricity, as well as human and knowledge connectivity. In this way, Japan will continue to lead the effort for tangible implementation. Of PGII. To do that, partnership with diverse actors who subscribe to its principles is essential. For the promotion of PGII, I call on everyone gathered here once again to work together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. May I now invite the Prime Minister of Italy for her remarks? Your Highnesses, Excellencies, um, when we launched the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment just over a year ago, we committed to building better infrastructure for better future in low and middle income nations. We committed to cooperate with these nations in a, with an equal, non predatory approach to create new opportunities and prosperity. Today is the launch of the new economic corridor between India and the Middle East and Europe goes precisely in this direction and is a milestone in strengthening global interconnections. And that is uh, why I want to thank uh, Prime Minister Modi, President Biden, and all the others, Ursula von der Leyen, and all the others who made it possible, for it's a very important thing. Um, and uh, this will scale up our economy's growth, opening enormous potential for mutual benefits in the business sector. Uh, obviously, Italy is ready to play a decisive role in this process. Also, through the unique expertise of Italian companies in the maritime and railway sector. Uh, and we want to contribute in building bridges between the Mediterranean and the Indo-Pacific, also in the fields of energy and digital connectivity via Africa and the Arabian Gulf. In the energy sector, we came to work in different fields, including the production and transport of green hydrogen from the Middle East to the Mediterranean. We also support the European Commission on the Helmet Project, a high voltage submarine electricity interconnection that will link Italy to Tunisia. Uh, we are working to strengthen digital connections uh, critical for innovation and growth between the wider Mediterranean and Asia, Lurama, uh, Raman, named after India's Nobel uh, laureate in, in physics, Raman, will connect Europe with India and involves major companies such as Google and Team Sparkle. However, we also are aware that there's still too much to be done to narrow the infrastructure gap with low and middle income nations. And this is why we will continue work on the partnership for global infrastructure and investment during the Italian G7 presidency next year. Thank you. Thank you to everybody.
Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, Your Highnesses and Your Excellencies, for launching the landmark India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor. I would request all media and officials to remain seated and standing in their places while the leaders Could depart. I, excuse me for interrupting, but as we say in my body used to work, a point of personal privilege. I did not uh, mention uh, the uh, Sheikh Mohammed of the UAE, but uh, because I knew he wasn't speaking. But I do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't think we'd be here without you. Thank you. Thank you.